Welcome to So Very Easy. My name is Laura and last week I shared a video on how to make these quick and easy reversible caps. These caps can be worn in more than one way and they can be used for more than one purpose. They're not only great as scrub caps, but they're great for bad hair days, they're great for if we just need to do some work and we want to keep the hair clean and off of our faces. They can also be used as chemo caps. And I did receive some amazing comments and questions. So today I would like to address some of those questions and comments because there's more than one way we can get around these caps. If you did not see the video, I'll put a link in the description so you can check it out. But let's address some of those questions. One of the questions I did get was, can we make this for a child and what size would we make? Well, a child's head is definitely a lot smaller than ours, but we can customize this to the size that we want. We're going to need a measurement from below the ear, up around the head to about the same spot. So we're not having the back of the neck, it's just a little bit below the ear, maybe by an inch or so. Now that measurement doesn't have to be exact. It's the ties that actually hold the cap on. So if we're off a little bit, that's fine. Now I was able to get my cute little neighbor's head size and Brooklyn's measurement was 17 and a half inches from behind the ear all the way to behind the ear. So that would be a good measurement to start with. The size really is quite adjustable, so we don't have to have it exact. Another question was, how can I reduce the bulk in the back of the cap? It's very hard to reduce the bulk because that size gives us that measurement to go over our head. So we can't make it much shorter because then it's not going to fit on the head. We can reduce the length by making the cuff a little bit bigger and we can tie on top of the elastic versus below the elastic. So we're going to be able to tie below the elastic or we can tie above the elastic. So that tie is going to sit pretty much on that elastic or just above it. Then when we tie it, the cap is a little bit smoother and we have no space underneath. Another question was about the buttons. Where do we put the buttons? What is the position of the buttons? And what are the buttons for? Let's cover what they're for first. There are a few different types of face masks, some that are tied right along the back of the head, so the buttons are not going to be required. The other has an elastic. So when the mask is going on the head, the elastic comes around and over your ears. When you wear them for a long time, the elastic really does bother the back of the ears. So the button is to replace the ears. So the button is going to hold that elastic. If there is no button, the tie will have to go behind the ear and the cap over top. The position of the button is going to change depending on the individual. The button can be done up high so that the mask can be pulled up higher or it can be done straight to the back of the ear. It really is a personal way on how they want the button and the position of the button. If you want the cuff, the button's going to have to go back. And if you want to put a button on both sides of the cap, you can put one button up a little bit high and the one below just a little bit lower. So the buttons are going to sit on top of each other. And that way you're not having a lot of bulk along the back of the head. Elastic was put in the back of the cap. And that elastic was basically just for comfort for the hair. It has nothing to do with the fit and it's not mandatory. So this elastic part is here. So it holds the hair in. So we can replace that elastic. The goal is to take all of that edge and pull it in as tight as we can. So we can use a very strong, thin piece of ribbon. The thin ribbon means this is going to be gathered in nice and tight. So there's not going to be a lot of space. 
if you use a fat ribbon, it's going to be wider. So the thinner, the better. The goal is to gather this up as tight as it can be. So the elastic was just used so you didn't have to figure out the size of the ribbon. So I would recommend with a smaller piece of ribbon than elastic because we don't want the ribbon coming out where the ties are. So we can start with a small piece, stitch it onto the ends, and then pull it through. Stitch on the one side and stitch on the other. We are only stitching the ties on because everything else is already encased and we won't have to worry about it. If we put the ribbon in, there just won't be any give in the back where the hair comes out. Now you can also wear your hair out. So instead of tucking your hair up inside, it can come out. So it's going to come out where the elastic is and the tie can still go below or up around the top of the head. Having the hair come out of the back just gives us one more option on how to wear it. If you're going to be making these as chemo hats, you can actually put a wig piece or a ponytail and attach it to the inside of the cap. So you're not attaching that hair piece on yourself. You're just going to stitch it right into the back. So when you wear the cap, that hair is going to come out of the back. So it's gonna look like you have a lot more hair than you do. So if you have, short black curly hair and you put a long white hair in, well you'll definitely confuse people, but it would be a lot of fun. Some wanted this piece smaller, some wanted it longer. You can make that cap longer so that it holds more hair in. You're just needing to extend the size. So let's make one more cap and I'm going to make it child size and we can cover some of these things we've talked about in that cap. The adult and child cap are made the same way. The sizes are just going to be a little different and we can still use two fat quarters. We're just going to be able to trim those fat quarters down and the extra will give us the ties. A fat quarter is approximately 22 inches by 18 inches and that's the size that we used for an adult. For a child, we're going to make it a little bit smaller. The part that goes around the head, we're going to cut at 18 inches. The length that's going to go from the forehead around to the back we're going to have at 16 inches. So you can cut off a long strip at the bottom if you'd like or the side. And these are going to be able to be used as ties. So we won't need additional fabric for that. So we have 18 inches by 16 inches. And just like the adult cap, and I'll put a link in the description for you, we need to measure over an inch and a half. We're going to come over, stitch a little bit, pop over, and finish stitching. So we're going to have an opening on the side and a little opening in the center. And this is where everything's going to be turned right side out. So stitch that quarter inch, leaving those three openings. From here, we're going to be able to fold this fabric in half. So I have a fold and the stitching line. The edge where there's no stitching, we need to make a curve. And that curve really is as simple as trimming it off. It doesn't have to be exact. I'm just going to take that point off and make a curve. So now we have this big curve. That curve from one point all the way to the next point is that entire elastic piece. So it's all been gathered as tight as we can towards the back. Stitch a quarter inch all the way along the edge. So we're gonna start up at this top, come all the way, and come right off the edge. Having a very small quarter inch seam allowance means it's going to gather tighter. Now we get to turn this right side out, right through this little opening. And I do like to make that opening big enough that I can put my hand in and just pull it all out. When we get to that corner, we will have two holes. And we can also take our hand and smooth that seam out even before we get it to the iron. So we can press that so that seam is right against the edge. And while we're pressing, we could press the seam allowance in along that large opening. 
and that way when I do the top stitching it'll close it all at the same time. We need to turn this shape into a little area that we can put the elastic or ribbon. So we're going to start right up at that top, stitch all the way around using that three quarters of an inch. And be sure to leave these two openings open. This is the basic finished shape of the cap before we put the elastic in. This flat piece is that piece along the head. This curve is that entire elastic and the measurement from the top of the head all the way to the back is this measurement. So if there is someone with very long thick hair you can make this longer. You can make it longer by two or three inches and it gives it a lot more in the back. So we have that extra length here. We will still have the curve the same, it's just longer. And to make those ties, we're going to take the fabric and fold it right sides touching. Stitch down one side and then all the way down to the other and leave the one side open. And we need to do that to both pieces. Once we have that stitching done, we can trim off a little bit of those corners. We want to come close to the corner stitching, but not on the corner stitching, on both corners. And to turn these right side out, we can use many different things. My favorite thing is a chopstick. Take that folded end and start to push it inside. Just pull that fabric as I'm pushing along that end. So the end is going to go all the way through. And since that chopstick's in there, I'll give it a little point and straighten up my ends. And then we can press those ties flat. When the cap is done, these ties will be coming out of the ends. This area needs to be gathered in. And that's where the original 8 inch elastic came in. But we can use anything thin like ribbon to gather this in. And if you don't have ribbon, we can always use that salvage end. That end of the fabric is a salvage and it's very, very strong and woven very tight. So it does not stretch. The first video, I had that elastic attached on the tie ends. So the procedure is going to be the same way, but instead of using elastic, we are going to use the 8 inch ribbon. We need to sew that ribbon right inside those straps and top stitch to hold it in place. Thread the ties and the elastic all the way around until the one tie comes out the end. So inside is the ribbon and that tie has just been tucked inside. Before you finish pulling the rest of the ribbon through, top stitch this tie down. And that's good and strong stitched on. So what we're looking at right now is that one tie is coming out and we have that ribbon inside. And I still have that pin or the bobkin in. Now I'm going to continue until I come to that end. And when the second tie comes out, we're going to be able to top stitch it down. This is where the elastic would have been. Now I have a strong piece of ribbon, or in this case, it was the salvage. And the child size is done. The elastic makes it a lot easier to sew, but you can add that ribbon. And you can see the difference in size. I'll put the child's on and you're going to be able to see the difference between the child size and the adult. Now, of course, the child size is going to be way too small for me, but you'll see that this piece is going to go from the side to the side, and there is the ribbon. That little piece of ribbon will equal anywhere between five or six inches in the child size cap. For a child's cap, I would recommend elastic. That way, it's going to be able to grow with them. Without that elastic, the hat does not stretch, but with the elastic, it's going to stretch. So it's going to give them a little bit more use out of the hat. With the elastic, even the small size 
can fit an adult. The ties are made a little smaller because, well, children are a little smaller. But with that elastic, even adults can wear it. The adult size definitely gives us more space from this edge to this edge. And we have a larger piece from here to the back. If you want the one for the very long hair, we're just going to take that measurement and make it a little longer. If you're able to, I do recommend putting the elastic in, especially for a child's cap, and that way they're going to be able to grow with it. This might fit along the back of their neck as they get a little bit bigger, but it'll give them a little bit more use. Using two layers of fabric definitely makes it quick and easy to do because we haven't had to do any of those rolled seams. You can also make it in terry cloth and it'll be good for when you come out of the shower. One other question I did get is, can I use this hat and make them and sell them in my craft shows? Yes, you can. I would be honored if you were to do that. But please keep in mind where you did get the pattern from. I hope this answers all of the comments and all of the questions. It is a fun cap to make. I do hope you give it a try. And don't worry about that curve. Just trim it off. I'll put a link in the description to the original pattern. And hopefully that will help out anything that we've missed today. And thank you for joining me today on So Very Easy. Feel free to subscribe and come on back. Let's see what we're talking about next time in the sewing room. Bye for now.